Good evening, everyone, Prairies. Good morning, Danny and his, all his um, friends from his home. Hey, Amen. Nice to see them here. You know, sometimes even though you can't hear and you can't do much, you can listen. God always gives you that attentive listening ear. Yeah. And then I know they're going to feel um, power, uh, empowered this morning. So we welcome them. And welcome all the visitors today to give you heaven and praise. And it is well with us all. We're going to stand up for Jesus this morning and stand up and tell him that we love my Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's rejoice. Sing together in one accord. Amen. Stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Stand up. Fish. 
shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Holiness unto the 
me Lord and try me one more time, one more time. Forgive me Lord and try me one more time. If I prosper, if I fail, I'm going to rise and try again. Forgive me Lord and try me one more time. Let's sing about it really, really. If we prosper, if we fail, we're going to try Yes, there's, no, there's no giving up when it comes to God's kingdom. Yes, you have to keep going on and pressing on. Amen. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. If I prosper, if I Examine your Lord and try my heart. Know me. Amen. Amen. This today's uh, announcements is uh, this evening we start a light on uh, Facebook at 8.30 p.m. with uh, Bishop Desmond. Uh, those of you who know about it, you can join in. It's live on Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Uh, our monthly food drive and outreach between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m and will be the third Saturday of each month here in the whole at Panel Craft Village. Uh, the next Saturday is Saturday coming, the 19th of uh, March, and that's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here in uh, this hall. Amen. Uh, Wednesday is our community update and prayer uh, on Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. with Bishop Desmond. Uh, service of empowerment every Wednesday evening between the hours of 7.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m. in the main hall, in this hall here, Panagraf Village, at 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And all is welcome. It's on a Wednesday, every Wednesday. Uh, the Women's Empowerment Coffee Morning and Breakfast on the first Saturday of each month, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. See Pastor Val for the next Saturday, which is the 2nd of April. Uh, the Men's Empowerment Breakfast Club on the 4th Saturday, of each month, for which we will be ordering breakfast from the Village Bistro. And the next Saturday will be the 26th of March at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And there's a flyer at the back to collect. Uh, you may know somebody you want to give it to or a few people. It's for the men's breakfast. Uh, there's on the table at the back there uh, for the men's empowerment breakfast. Our church trip on Saturday the 20th of August, uh, 2022, to Southport. Uh, all are welcome. Uh, the cost will be £30 uh, for adults and £15 for under-16s. Uh, please see Bishop Desmond, and you can pay a deposit weekly if you wish. Uh, an initial deposit of £5 secure your seats. Okay, so that's the 20th of August, 22, to Southport. Sorry, people, we just announced as well, my apologies, that one of the coaches will have lift, dis dis disabled lift access as well. Okay. Uh, yes, there will be disabled lift access also for those who want to come, so there's no discrimination. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Access for all. Yes. Amen. And so do remember, uh, see Bishop Desmond and that obviously is 35 for adults, 15 pounds for under 16s. The church phone number 0121 295 7411 is now live. So if you need to contact the church for anything whatsoever to find that information or whatever, it is 0121 295 7411. If you need to get that after service, we can ask you again. Uh, next week, Sunday. The 20th of March, our speaker will be Pastor Sheena. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
this time, I'll ask the worship team to return and take us into our worship. Lord, hold my hand while I run this way. Lord, hold my hand. Corinth was a very 
debauched place. It was one of those places that I can't even think of anywhere in Birmingham that's like that. And Corinth had a temple for prostitution. It was a very, it was like London, very vibrant. And uh, you had to pass through it every, it was the commercial port. And uh, when some of these uh, traders were coming through, they would actually go to the temple to sleep with the prostitutes, pay them, and they were actually praying. By doing that, it was an act of worship for them. So these were the kind of things the Corinthians were coming out of. But if you notice in verse 1 to 4 that he read, it talks about the spirit, the spiritual. Uh, these were spiritual people. God had taken them from all of this. But he had made, he had given them gifts. They had gifts, but they were immature. And last week, uh, we read from Timothy, and it was about the congregation. So I'm going to pick up from verse 16. So where we see that you had a congregation that had spiritual gifts, it was a congregation that was still immature and still was impacted by their cultural yes. environment. Yes. So with that in mind, 16, read it from verse 16 to 31. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But no, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you, no. Much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unrepresentable parts have greater modesty. Amen. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member su suffers, all the members suffer with it. Amen. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ Amen. and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. Amen. First apostles, next prophets, third teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm chained here. I'm just going to stand and sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Take of our offering. Praise and worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, I believe. 
praise is to our God. Everywhere that worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Everywhere that worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God our Savior. God our Savior. God our healer. God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God our Picks us up and he turns us around, and no matter what happens, the fact we 
can get up and dust ourselves off and keep on the journey that God has given to each and every one of us. We must keep that back. We must not also lose sight that in the second week, the second Sunday of Lent, we have to give thanks to God because, remember, we're in the wilderness right now and we've got to come out of that wilderness. But unless we have the vision that we're going to come out of the wilderness, then we get sick and we do nothing. And our God is an awesome God that will take us through. By the head, let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error of the light of your truth that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are of the country to their profession yes. and follow all such things that are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And each week, we will be praying that God strengthens us for whatever you're doing during this season of Lent. But one thing I will remind you, that my personal mission is to ensure that we are better soldiers of the cross. Amen? No gimmicks. Let us be firm in the understanding that we understand the promises that God has given unto us. And let us stand firm that we know where we are going. I know where I am going, I know. I know where I am going, I know. Joy bells are ringing, happy children are singing, I know. than the day before. Amen? amen? Give an amen if you agree with that. Amen. Even if you're flat on your face. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. And just before, please be seated, and before Pastor Val comes and delivers today's word. And, um, oh, I haven't taken it off that. But a topic today is timely. And it's timely for the work that we have ahead of us. You know, um, we give God thanks because, remember, we have, I think next week is our six month anniversary here. Wow. And we give God thanks. We give God thanks. When you think about it, right in six months, we started with a handful and we are growing. We got a women's group. We do food parcels. We got a men's group. And do you know something? We give God thanks. And we have a structure. We even got a landline telephone number. God is good. God has been good to us. Because God, the structures are being put in. So that God's work can manifest now. And that we become one of the leaders in the area. Isn't God wonderful? Amen. But to do that, you must be obedient Amen. and compliant to God's word that he gives to each and every one of us. And one thing I'm going to charge you with today, 
Not every single word that comes from this pulpit is going to fit you. But it's going to fit somebody. Remember, it's going to fit somebody. And one thing I always say is this. Who, who it is for, accept it how it is given unto you. Meaning that you must be compliant with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Val is going to talk to us today about team spirit, the power of unity. Amen. And my God, some of us really need the encouragement right now. I'll tell you something. Even the body of Christ at times becomes so disjointed by personal doctrines. Today, this week in court, a young lady, when I walked in, um, she said to me, she said, you can answer this. Who was Abraham in the Bible? And I said to you, you know what you do? Go and read the first four chapters and we'll have a conversation. And she smiled at me and I said, we will have the conversation, but you go and read upon it first. Because you know what we're doing? We pro sometimes we provide too many answers mm -hmm. and don't encourage people to go research. Mm -hmm. Amen? And when I get there, it's encouraging to go read it. Because I've seen her in court every day. She's not involved in our case, it's something else. But importantly, I encourage you to go read a Bible. Amen. How many of you are encouraging somebody to at least read one chapter in the Bible? Ask yourself that question. Sometimes you just want to provide so many answers. We're not encouraging the research. And when I, when I first got baptized and etc., every time, you know, we had to pick up in the Bible physically and read it. God, we have Google today. About the people that use Google to research, and it's not a crime. At least you're researching, amen? And that's the important thing. So now, worship team's gonna come. You're going to sing the song Lily of the Valley as we call Pastor Val to come and deliver the word of the Lord. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day which you have made. Father, as this word is to be delivered, let this word be of you. Father, let it resonate in our hearts today. Unity is our strength. Being a team and a part of your body is the strength that we need right now. Father God, it is a wonderful thing when just one part doesn't blossom, but the whole part. Yeah. Father, we pray for your servant right now, Father. We pray for strength and we pray for your divine power to be instilled upon her right now as she delivers your word, Father. Bless your messenger, we pray, and let the word be received with you as the head of the household. In Jesus' name, amen. The next voice you're going to hear after the worship team is Pastor Val. Pastor Val, one of our pastors, the church, the church pastor Val. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me, he's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, and in him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay, he tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken, and all my sorrows borne. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. For I have all my been forsaken, and all my idols torn. For my heart, and now I know he keeps me high. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempts me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the Bright and morning star, he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, or yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. It's a war about me, fire, but nothing now I fear. With his manly, my hungry soul shall be. Up to glory to see his blessed face, where dreamers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. 
the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. One more time. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Yes, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. Amen. Comes to deliver the word. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Hallelujah. Bind that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Come on, one more time. And sing it from the Oh my God, 
it will appear as if there is a place in heaven for Pentecostals and a place in heaven for, for, for New Testament and a place, oh my God, there is no separation. We serve one true and living God. One true and living God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh my God. I know this one said, I'm the right church. The other one said, I'm the right church. But are you the right person? Are you the right person for God? Are you a called out person? Because the church is not the building. The church is the ecclesia. The ecclesia means a call out. A call out set of people. So every day we said we are running to church. Get up. Run to church with your spirit at work. Run in your home with your spirit. I'm not saying you must not come to the building because the scripture said we must not forget the assembly of ourselves one with another. Because in doing so, we encourage each other. We give testimonies that will encourage and inspire each other. We can share a word. As many of you know, because I'm a, from a teaching background, and I think as we hear the scriptures, it talks about preachers, apostles, whatever. Although I operate in the fivefold ministry, I'm more of a teacher than a preacher. Okay? So today, the topic is, um, it's about teamwork. Who's heard of teamwork? Okay? Because what they say, teamwork makes the dream work. Okay? And so today, we're not just looking at the teamwork, we're looking at working in the team as a unit. In unity. Not as separated people, not one unit, two units, three units, but a whole. Do you agree with me? Yes. In, in my teaching, in my preaching, uh, teaching strong preaching, if you agree and you want to encourage me that you do agree, just let me hear you say, Amen. 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 Oh, praise God, praise Amen. God, praise God. So, we're carrying on from looking at, uh, you know, purpose and working together for one common cause. This is the theme. And so from that, we break it down and we look at, let us look at ourselves. What is unity? Let's look at what is unity. Unity as described in the dictionary, the de definition is, it's a state of being united. A state of being united. Where there's a song that some churches say, we are one body, we are not divided, something like that. All one body we. One in hope and doctrine. One in charity. One, one, one. Okay? It means there's no division. It means togetherness, oneness. It is harmonious and peaceful. Harmonious. When you work together in harmony, when 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 the musicians or singers are singing, you cannot get get the soprano singing bass or the bass singing a, a soprano or it will be a, it won't make um, sweet music, and you have people wondering what's going on, what's going on, you know. And when they're playing the music, they have to know what keys to play, for it to be harmonious. Oh, hallelujah. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? Oh my God. Okay, and we read in the scriptures, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to do what? To equip the saints for the work of ministry. To equip. For building up the body of Christ until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God 
to mature man womanhood. Amen. To mature man womanhood. Because we can come every day and we can hear the word and we do not apply them. And like Bishop said, you don't even go home and look at what Val, Pastor Val, stroke Pastor Val said. Oh, what she said. Was that real? Was that true? You know, does it, yeah, was it in the scriptures? We need, the Bible said, we need to search the scriptures. We need to study to show ourselves approved. I said to somebody this morning, I'm not going to give you a fish. You may, you may be hungry. You may be starving. But I'm not going to give you a fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish. Because when you eat that fish for that moment in time, tomorrow you're going to be hungry again. And then you're going to keep coming back to me. And then it's going to drain me. And then I'm going to get fed up because I'm a human being. And I'm going to say, didn't I tell you yesterday to search God? I may have some tolerance depending on who the person is. But if, if, if the baby keeps crying, crying, and you think the baby is hungry, and you give the baby some milk, and the baby is still crying, you see, and you do everything to comfort the baby, but the baby only has one aim. What? For you to pick that baby up. Yes. My God, my God, my God. So when people are seeking attention, and seeking to be picked up when they can get themselves up or they don't need to be picked up you're just wasting time when there are other people out there Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! 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 Oh my God! Holy God! Oh my God! And what the scripture goes on to say when we study the word how to work in unity and harmony we will show ourselves approved and we don't have to be little children. Amen. In one scripture, the scripture does say, unless you become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. But the scripture is not saying, act childish. It's not saying so. It said, be a child at heart. Amen. Loving, Amen. forgiving, yes. caring. And I love my children dearly, 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 they know that. But if they're stepping out of line and they're doing something that is wrong and I don't correct them or try to put them on the right path, that means I don't love them. That means I'm not in unity with them. And you know one thing I love about my family? I will say it loud on the mountains up and I know the two are here today. You know what I love about them? The harmonious way they work together. The unity in which they work together. Sometimes I sit back and I'm in awe. And some things I do not tell them if I'm a bit upset or anything like that. Because of the harmony that we have with each other. They're going to fly off the handle <laughs> and they're going to start to take the case up in their hand. Because why? There's unity. There's unity, and unity will bring results. It will bring results. You know, there's another thing that came to my thought the other day. If somebody, we're a group here, and we're aiming to do a work in the kingdom of God. How can we work in the kingdom of God if we're pulling each other down? Come on now. If any one of you in here could say to anyone that I gossip about them, please stand up and let me know. Because I'm telling you this, if I gossip about you, and if I talk about you, I'd rather talk to the person themselves and tell them what is causing me concern. Because when I go and tell my daughter Sam that Ray did so and so, what am I doing? Bringing discord amongst them and separation. If somebody come and tell me that they do something, I can't dismiss it, but I will say to the person, well, I'm, I'm surprised that they behave like that or they did that. Yeah. And then I have to go to them and I say, you 
you know, this was brought to my attention. What caused you to behave that way? What caused you to do this? And then they can explain. And we can have an understanding. Communication. Communication in teamwork. Communication in unity. Unity. Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about, you see, when you have love, when you have love, you will work together in unity. Because the thing is, we want to see each other progress. We don't want to have the crab syndrome. Crabs in a barrel. And one is trying to get out to see what they can do on the outside to get the others out. But we're so busy. The other crabs are so busy pulling them down that they're all staying at the same place. And nobody making any progress. My God. I just want you to think about it for a moment. Think about it. Where are we at? What is teamwork? Teamwork relies on everyone knowing their position and fulfilling it. Knowing your position and fulfilling it. It's no good. You know, one thing I know for a fact, and I will tell each and every one, if I know my stuff and I know what I'm doing, don't come and dictate to me. Amen. Don't dictate to me. If God give me a vision and God give me the direction, I'm not having no one dictate to me. Yes, you can come along and you can say, oh, Val, do you, have you thought of putting the book that way? Amen. Yeah, have you thought of it? Then I, in my communication with you, in the relationship, I can say, yes, I did try that, you know, I did do that, but it didn't work. And because I've got this vision, it's going to work this way. And for us to get the full result, we need to work that way. The other thing is, we need to have respect for each other. Have respect. I went out somewhere to a conference yesterday. Over the last few weeks, I've been suffering with a, a, a coldness, being so cold, I just couldn't get warm. So I had my coat in at this event yesterday, and I had my hat on. And the woman came up to me, and she said, take your coat off and take your hat off. And I thought, how dare you? <laughs> I thought to myself, how dare you speak to me like you're talking to your child? And you don't even know the reason why I've got it on. You know, okay, we may not be in a team. However, we need to learn to adjust our mentality. And need to know how to speak to each other. And now, sometimes, I may say a word, you may say a word to me. And before I respond, I need to stop sometimes. And think about it. Think about it. How will it affect that person? What will it do to them? And you know, there are times as well. If you're not in, if you're in a teamwork, you have to let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Because it's contrary. I'm there wondering, should I go to shop? Whilst somebody had already gone shop, don't be shopping. Yeah? yeah? And I've gone out now, gone to duplicate. Yeah. My God, duplicate the same thing. Why? Because there's no unity. There's no team. There's no communication. There's no respect. There's no understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in order for us to be a team player, we need to change our mindsets. Amen. We need to change our mindset. It's not like that's how my mother used to do it. And that's, that's how I know it. No, it's not so. Um, well, I'm not using um, my iPad as a, as, a, as a scripture reading. Um, they're going to come a time 
trust me, there's going to come a time that if you haven't got the word in your heart, you're going to have to use more than an iPad. Because the Bible, the word, will be taken away. So we have to learn to adjust with the times that we're living in. Don't do the things of the world in the times that we're living in. Not the evil what they do. Not when they come upon and plant and scheme and try to take you off track. No, that's of the world. But we have to have the spirit of discernment, discern the time in which we are living. The time and the season in which we are living. I just, I, I, I'm standing here today and telling, talking to us, because it's not a dictatorship. It's guiding you, advising you. Sometimes our lives would have been a lot better, you know, and we would have gotten with a lot more people if only we, only we take time out to understand, you know, each other. Get to know each other. If I don't like being, being dictated, then don't dictate to me. If I don't like it, don't do it. And if you don't like it, I won't do it. That's teamwork. My God, and the power, the power of unity. And one scripture says, one can chase a thousand, but two, ten thousand. My God, can you imagine the effect we would have on the world? Oh my God, can you imagine the effect we would have on the world? Can you imagine the effect we would have in our homes? Can you imagine the effect we would have in our community? If we work in that spirit of unity. But it's got to start with love. 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 Jesus. I hear the voice of Jesus saying to us today, your ears, but you cannot hear. You have eyes, but you cannot see. My God, my God. Are we, is he talking to us? My God, let us examine ourselves. Are we hearing? And are we going to apply the word of God today? My God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the body of Christ, or the people, that are the, of the whole community, community supported by one person. Who's that person? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're supported by him. And if we know that we're supported by him, why do we go begging bread? Begging the world to teach us how to live in unity. Eh? Think about it. My God. We as the Ecclesia, the church, we're supposed to lead the way, set the example, and no matter what may come your way, you say, I've got one who watches over me, one who cares for me, one who understands me, one who wants us to be one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He wants us, the Lord Jesus, who's the head of my life, Who's the head of my home? Who's the head of my communication? He is the one that I'm looking to for direction. For direction. You know, I, I'm trying to follow some of what the Lord has told me, and I'm standing here, and as he whispers in my hearing, I will speak. And like Bishop said, however it comes across, see it with the eyes of Jesus. Hear it from the ears of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in that way, we will not be easily offended. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I'm stepping out of line, if I'm stepping out of line and I'm connected to my force of direction, who is the force of my direction? When a tree is planted, and the root go right down. The tree gets its life, its source from the tree, the root going down. If you disconnect the tree from its root, what do you think is gonna happen? 
the tree will die. So God is saying to us today, be connected to your source of strength, your source of direction, your source of authority, your source of communication, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we do that, even if people want to be offended with you, if they want to um, discommunicate you, if they want to stand aside from you, as long as the Almighty God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah! 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 We stand firm in the liberty where we in Christ has made us free. Free. And when we come, as a group of people on one accord to make a difference in our world, then we will know that the Spirit has set us free. Amen. If you know the voice of God, if you can hear from God, you know, sometimes the mistakes that we make, we would not have made them. We would not have made them. But because we think well, this is a church, but I'm only sister so-and-so. What do you mean I'm only sister so-and-so? You are part of the body of Christ. Amen. Yes. It, it, you know, if you're the feet, do not stand in the way of the hands. Amen. Do not stand in the way of the hands. Know your place. Know what you're called to do. Know your strength. Know your expertise. And know, most of all, what God has called you to do. The second thing is, we've got our bishop. You see, there's an alignment and there's a structure. And the bishop is there and he's been given a revelation and a vision and, you know, uh, what God has called him to do. So I, as the pastor, I can see things that need to be done which I don't expect the bishop to do because we are alleviating some of the burdens. Yeah? It's not that I want, you want to step on his toes, but look around. Be observant. Amen. What can I do to help this man of God? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I just going to criticize him? Am I going to criticize him? Because he may have made a mistake. Well, you shall know me very well. <laughs> Oh, 
well, you're young people, um, uh, whatever, whatever, you must know, it's not happening around me. You keep going to tell your home. <laughs> but it's not happening at my home. Because I've got certain values and principles, and because I love them, and we have that relationship that we can discuss it, and we can talk about it. As a matter of fact, there are certain things that they know, they wouldn't even think about it. They wouldn't even think about it. They wouldn't even come and say, oh, mom, can so-and-so happen? They wouldn't have asked me because they already know what the answer is because they know what my values are. They know what my principles are. And so, therefore, when we know that about each other, we can be on the defensive for them, not condoning the wrongs, don't get me wrong, but we must support each other to let them know, First Lady, I'm with you. No matter what we may say or do, did no breach can come between us. We do not leave that space. But it will only come if you leave that gap. That gap. But united we stand, divided. United we stand, stand, stand. Even sometimes you don't understand the thing. Seek wisdom. Seek guidance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel today that the Lord has got so much greatness out there for us as a church to do. But we cannot do it in um, disunity. You know, there's a... Um, what do they call it now? You know, when you have problems at work, union, there's unions, yeah? And there's one called unison. What does that mean? They mean they're all together. All together. Unite together to stand for their right. Unite together to get results. Unite together. And if a push comes to shoot, that they will shut the place down. They're going to shut it down because we are together in this thing. We are together in this thing. Um, you may have to show me your hand, Bishop, uh, how much time I've got left. Because the Lord is preparing us for something great. For something great. You know, it, it, because miracles. Jesus isn't going to come down and do miracles, you know. Do you believe it? We are his hands, we are his feet, we, the enemy need a body to operate in. And so does the Holy Spirit of God need a body to operate in. Is your body available for the Holy Ghost to operate in? Amen. Hallelujah. Someone, some writer said, use me Lord, Amen. use me Lord, so I can show someone the way. So I can show someone the way. Use me, Lord. Are you ready? I'm available to you. Yes, yes, yes. Are you available? Are you going to make your mind available? Are we going to leave here today from hearing the word and still go back into where we were yesterday? My God, think about it. One step at a time. But make some step to change. To change. And don't always put the blame on the next team player. Well, it was because um, Brother Ian didn't bring the tea this morning. I couldn't offer you a cup of tea. Why don't you get up and go make the tea yourself? My God. But we're always looking for excuse, excuse, excuse. I behave in a, in a, 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 a manner that is disrespectful, and then I turn around to the team and said, what's well, the way you treat me made you behave that way? No, you were that way. You are that way. And sometimes we get a certain treatment just for your growth, just for you to know where you are, to know where you stand. So it's not everything we have to off and off all. We must be humble, humble. And you know, um, 
The word of God is saying to us today, put on your armor, get ready. Bishop T.G. Jakes would say, get ready, get ready, get ready. So let's get ready. And we talk about the oil. Um, I was going to talk about when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall. Because he had a team. Nehemiah had a team. Something was broken, which needs to be fixed. And so they saw it, but they had to work as a team. Sanballat and Tobiah, the enemy came to stop them doing that work, to rebuilding the wall. But we are here today to build. The world is broken. But when we're in unity and when we're together, the effectiveness will be that the um, brokenness will be made whole. Brokenness will be made whole. And we will make a difference. You know what will happen when we're in unity? Common things and common people will make uncommon things happen. We'll make uncommon things happen. And that's what we call miracle because uncommon people, God has covered them, God has endowed them with that spirit to do the work of him who saved me while it's day. For when the night is come, the day will be, the work will be done away. So don't be lazy in what you're doing. Don't procrastinate. Don't sit back and say, oh, tomorrow I will invite somebody to church. Tomorrow I will tell somebody you're doing a good work. No. We cannot do that. We must work the work of him who sent us while it's day. For when the night has come, time for the work to be done away. Will you be willing to work for Jesus while it's day? Hallelujah. Ask yourself the question. Is it I, me and myself? Is it I have to go to work? I have to look after the children. I have to do this. I have to do that. I've got no time to go and witness to anyone. I've got no time to even spend half an hour with God. I've got no time when God is your timekeeper. When you ask him for time, he will give it you. Once you've got a, a desire, the Lord says, I will work upon the good desires of your heart. He will work upon the good desires of your heart. So what is the scripture saying today? We need to have good desires. Good desires, and God will work upon it. And today, I just pray that as we leave here, and like Paul, as he was a prisoner for the Lord, he urged you to live worthy of the calling, worthy of the calling, Bishop, worthy of the calling, Deacon, worthy of the calling, First Lady, worthy of the calling, members of the congregation, worthy of the calling, because God has called us out to be in our communities, in our world. And when we apply those principles, and when we apply those principles, as I said, souls will be saved. Brokenness will be restored. Brokenness will be restored. Whatever you're broken in, if your home's broken, it will be restored. If your community is broken, it will be restored. If the world is broken, it will be restored. And God will be glorified. God bless you. Pastor Mel said, indicate to me, Bishop. I didn't. Because, you know, when the word is being delivered, yes, let it be delivered. Amen. Amen. Amen? And what is for you? Take away what is for you. Yes. That's the key element, isn't it? Amen. Take away what's for you. Because there's so much disjointment at times yes. in the body of Christ. Yes. And some of it is just a personal game. Yes. Not many people want to give up their time. You know, to do what is not on their agenda. But are we on our agenda or are we on God's agenda? Whose agenda are we working towards? What are we really doing? You know, my brothers and sisters, this chorus has come to me, and I know it's going to give First Lady a problem again because some of these, what I call 
and those who couldn't come to the altar for prayer, we went to them. Amen. And it's important as well, you know, because although the altar is there, Prayers are answered no matter where we are. Amen. 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 Everywhere is God's altar. Amen. Some of us think you have to be in a special place to be at God's altar. You don't need to. Whilst your heart, your mind, your body and soul is in the place, then that is where. We remember the Servant on the Mount last week in the church. Remember the message given on the shores of Galilee that we're going to be obviously expressing, you know, uh, uh, you know on um, Easter Sunday. That wasn't in a church. In fact, where Jesus walked, most of the time, the only place he was rejected from was a church. Imagine. Imagine you're, 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 you are there, you are Jesus, and you are rejected from the, of all places, the church building. Amen. Well, you know so we serve a mighty God and he's everywhere. No matter who we are or what we think, we serve a mighty God. Praise the Lord. So we're going to ask, um, let's see, just see where the Spirit's leading us right now. We're going to ask, um, first let just close us in. Right, just on the left in King. Thank you, Lord, that the Spirit can move in this house this morning. We thank you for each and every one of us here. That the, the lesson that we had today from Pastor Val will be nourishing to our souls. We all play a part in your kingdom. Yeah. And Lord, I pray that our ears and eyes can open to hear your spirit. The spirit that you left us with. Your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that Holy Spirit that binds us together and is in alignment with you. And when you speak to us, Lord, I pray that our ears are open wide to receive the word from you. So we thank you for today's blessing, Lord. Lord, even songs that we don't know, we can make them new. And it's so nice to sing the old songs that where the Spirit moves. And the words are so anointing that we understand. Sometimes we cannot read, but when we hear a song, it ministers to our soul. So we thank you for that song. Let the Spirit move. Brothers and sisters, get on your knees. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have to be reminded sometimes to get us back in line with you. We just thank you for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that would at least withdraw us and all of us today. That we have your way with us, Lord. Renew our minds, Lord. Refresh us again. That you are real. And in the season that we are in, the war and the fighting all over the place, we know that we have to just keep our eyes on you. And we're encouraged by the people in, in Ukraine that they are looking at you to get them through. So we, we will keep them in prayer at this time. And we know that God, you are looking after them. And you're going to make a way out for them. Because they are your people. They are your children. And they are your light. So let your light shine upon them, Lord in every direction, in every corner that they need you, Lord, they can cry out to you. And you will hear their cry. So, Lord, as we go out our separate ways, we just pray for traveling mercies, Lord. We pray that when we go home, we can love each other as a family and unite, and be united in one accord. So we thank you that you will bind us all together with cords that cannot be broken, that this is the day that you made for us all today. We thank you for our visitors that came today. We thank you for um, there's a brother and his, and his family that came to, from their home to our home today. And I know they were enjoying and moving around, but Lord, you have given them that listening, that intended ear, that they can listen to you and listen to the word and take away, even with the vibrations that they hear, the sweet songs of singing, there's some way that you will get through to them and they will hear as well as we did today. So Lord, we thank you. We lift up our hands before you today, and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way. Amen. 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 Church say, amen. 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 amen, amen. So God bless you this morning. Let the church say,